Hello everyone, I'm Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Animal Sanctuary. Welcome to this very brief introduction to stress and some associated body language that you may see in these four animal types, cats, dogs, horses, and snakes. Stress is an organism's response to change or to some demanding circumstances. It results in a physiological response in the body that increases stress hormones, heart rate, and respiration, among lots of other things. It also results in changes in behavior so that the animal is able to manage and cope with the stressor. Historically, stress was referred to as eustress or good stress and distress or bad stress. And it was thought there was a homeostatic baseline to which all organisms return to following a stressful event. Currently, stress is thought to be categorized in three ways, good, tolerable, or toxic. Good being exciting, challenging, tolerable being challenging, but also distressing, but the animal can cope with it and move on with life. And toxic stress being horrible stress that the animal can't cope with, it's extremely distressing, Often the animal is not able to move on normally and it causes detrimental long-term impacts to the organism's life. It's thought that there's an allostatic baseline that animals do return to, but that that baseline can change. So based on how organisms learn, grow, and build resiliency, things that used to stress them may no longer stress them. Assessing stress levels can be done through observation of body language and behavior or physiologically or immunologically. The most accessible way to measure stress for trainers and caretakers is going to be through observing the animal's behavior before, during, and following an event. This is just a partial list of body language that might be associated with good stress in these four types of animals. Cats and dogs are going to have friendly interactions with each other and with people. They're going to be playful. They're going to be eating and taking treats. Cats are likely going to be grooming themselves and one another. Dogs are likely going to be sniffing and exploring the environment. Snakes are also going to be sniffing and exploring the environment, but they're going to do that through tongue flicking. They're going to investigate novel objects by fluidly orienting towards stimuli, and their body language is going to be alert but toned, and their body overall will be relaxed. Horses are going to be friendly, displaying curiosity. They are also going to calmly orient towards stimuli and be investigating novel objects. Body language associated with tolerable stress in these animals. Now remember this is challenging and distressing, but the animals are able to cope. You're gonna see some avoidance behavior start to happen in all of these species now. You're gonna to start to see perhaps meowing and pawing in cats, barking and whining in dogs. You may see some tense body posture in cats, some lowered ears and overall body posture in both cats and dogs, and dogs may be pacing. Horses may have a raised head and neck, you might see the whites of their eyes starting to show. You're gonna see frequent changes in the directionality of their ears and they may be nervously pawing at the ground. Some snake species may also raise their head and arch the front third of their body. Some may just start avoiding things altogether and hiding. Their body posture is gonna be much more stiff and jerky and you're gonna have a general increased speed if they are moving. These are body languages that could be associated with toxic stress in these animals. For all of these animals, you're gonna to start to see escape and avoidance behavior, trying to distance themselves from whatever is frightening them or is aversive to them. In cats, you're gonna see hissing, hypervigilance, maybe clawing at things or hanging onto things with their claws. Dogs may be excessively panting. They might start to exhibit escape behavior, jumping, pacing, growling, barking. Horses are going to try to create distance by kicking or striking out with front hooves, pinning their ears, rearing and charging, and just bolting to escape. You may also see snakes just bolting to escape. But some species may freeze and hide, while other species may start striking and hissing. Some snakes may flatten their body, others may make their body larger, and you might see some general body writhing just from head to tail. Remember that stress can be good, tolerable, or toxic, and we don't get to decide what is stressful and what type of stress it is the animal will let us know. We can't always know in the moment what the impact of that stress is going to be for the animal, so we need to look at the animal's future behavior. How do they behave following the event? Do they choose to repeat the experience in the future? How do they behave in the same or similar situation next time? And do they experience behavior changes that include sleep disturbances, eating changes or other changes to their normal behavior following the event. Examples of stress are illustrated in these photos 
and this is definitely distress, so it's either tolerable or toxic, and we don't know which until we see how these animals behave after the event. In this video, we're also looking at whether the stress is good, tolerable, or toxic. Her behavior before the event is pretty relaxed and obviously good. She chose to come out on her own, but she fell and she gets grabbed by a human. Now, her reaction to that looks pretty relaxed. She's tongue flicking, she's orienting towards stimuli, she's not balling up, she's not trying to escape, she's not flighty. So we would have to look at if she chooses to come out of her enclosure on her own again in the future, and if she chooses to explore this exercise area again in the future to know if this was tolerable or toxic stress for her. Here are the complete body language charts that I pulled some of this body language from, and if you would like copies of these, I have them available. You can just contact me. Thank you so much for watching and learning with me today. For more detailed information, you can watch some of my longer videos on YouTube that explain these things in detail. You can visit my website at behavioreducation.org. And for some complete courses on stress in animals, I encourage you to visit Science Matters Academy of Animal Behavior. Until next time, everybody, please remember to always be kind and love your animals.